nice and quiet and peaceful out here. Oh, oh boy. Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to today's video. Uh, today it's Sunday, that means we are doing an outdoor ride. So third time this year, and we're heading over back to uh, Scattercook Road. We're gonna start off at Scattercook and we're actually riding into New York. So we'll be checking out some new gravel roads and I'll be doing a workout four by eight minutes. So eight minutes on the climbs and hopefully, I'm hoping that there's enough uh, road to be able to do eight minute intervals. Uh, and Jason is doing his zone two ride few things. It's really windy. It's going to be pretty windy outside today. Um, I believe wind gusts up to 35 miles an hour. We're riding into a headwind to start off and then we have a tailwind coming back. The good news is that it's going to be pretty sunny. So hopefully it's going to be okay um, in terms of temperature wise. I am bundled up. I have three layers on. Um, well, actually I got my base layer. I have my long sleeve jersey. I have a wind vest underneath that, along with my gore uh, jacket that's also windproof. Um, so I got, yeah, three layers on. I got thermals bibs on today. Uh, so ready for whatever conditions um, we're thrown into when we get there. So something new that we're testing today, uh, we got new action cameras because we've had uh, trouble with the current one that we had um, with the battery life so we had the Osmo action uh, action cameras we use that for our rides and we do a lot of we use a lot of the DJI products and uh, I looked into the new iterations of the Osmo action and found that the Osmo action 3 is probably the best for what we're doing, especially when we're used to uh, the settings anyway. Or the benefit of the Osmo Action 3 is that it has that ultra wide um, field of view, which is good because, you know, I feel like that was what uh, the struggle, the struggle with the uh, first iteration was that um, the view wasn't wide enough. So you really couldn't see, especially activities that we do uh, where it would require uh, would require that. So um, we got new cameras and testing them out today and hopefully uh, you know we get some good shots of these new roads that we're riding into. Yeah I'm uh, I'm not too sure how this ride is gonna go. It's pretty cold outside and I typically don't like riding in the cold. Um, the positive is that it's sunny so hopefully that'll help um, I don't think it would actually be that cold if it wasn't for the wind um, Joy mentioned that you know, there's um, it's pretty windy and there's going to be some gusts so hopefully um, the layers that we're wearing are enough to to keep us sheltered from the elements. The biggest problem that I have is with my hands getting cold. And I have heated gloves, but the battery hasn't been lasting very long with them. And the ride, the length of the ride that we're doing is um, kind of longer than what the normal battery life for the gloves was anyway. So I know that the battery on the gloves is gonna run out um, probably early on in the ride. So I'm bringing some hand warmers, uh, you know, some hot hands packs that I'm gonna stuff inside the gloves and hopefully that helps. <laughs>
well guys, we're uh, started on the ride here and it is pretty cold. Uh, I think with the wind chill, it feels like in the 20s Fahrenheit. And I'm doing okay though. I think I wore enough layers on my upper body. My legs are a little cold. My hands are a little cold. But I think uh, this might be doable. Man, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the wind, oh, it is battering us. some crosswinds. Crosswinds in the open field there. Uh, I think now we're heading into a headwind. So it's definitely a quite a grind riding into the headwind. I know it's not in the 20s because it's not bone chilling cold like I can tell when it's too cold when my my fingers start to feel start to freeze and my hands are even with my gloves off today when I was setting up the bike my hands didn't freeze As I struggle to do this workout, I might as well talk about our plans for 2023. I consider it a full calendar of events of gravel grinders and road centuries. The first event Jason and I are participating in will be the Toad Strangler on April 15th. Three weeks after that, we will return to Farmer's Daughter to PR our original time. One week after that will be the Mine Hill Challenge, a 13 mile loop which we will be riding three times. In June, we signed up for Mount Greylock Century Challenge, which is 100 miles with over 12,000 feet of climbing. This will be our first road event, so stay tuned to see our preparation for this. We have other events on the calendar as well, but these are just some to name a few. Well, Joy's doing her first effort. Well, she's probably done with it by now uh, and probably waiting for me. Uh, it's just uh, grabbing something to eat while I grind up these little hills. Just trying to stay in zone two today or at least keep my heart rate in zone two. Somewhere in New York, state right now I think south south of Mania or somewhere close to there and on our first on our first one of the uh, gravel roads in New York so far it's uh it's very nice
hard to maintain the power because uh, I'm not familiar with these roads yet, so I um, dropped the power a little bit descending, but learning a few things and uh, how I got to be on top of the gears shifting uh, as soon as I see either the uh, terrain pitching downwards or uh, or upwards so oops, lesson learned I don't know where I'm pointing a camera now uh, I want to wait for Jason here since he's is doing his own two up this. I want to get off the bike and fix my uh, stem mount. And it's nice and quiet and peaceful out here. Well, I just fell because I kind of tripped over this stuff. Wasn't really paying attention. And uh, I guess that's what happens when you don't pay attention. And uh, hopefully I fell on the right side of my bike, so I hope I didn't bend the derailleur or anything. Anyway, I probably should uh, stop talking to the camera while I go through this road in case there's any more rubbish on, in the middle of the road. Can't record anything forward because this is what happened to my stem mount. Don't really know how I twisted it that way. Yeah. Yeah, so now I feel the wind again because there's less trees. On the next climb, I mistakenly started my interval, but realized I did not have enough road left to complete the full eight minutes. I am. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with you though, but I, I'm recording you. I decided to stop at six and a half minutes and waited for Jason to catch up. Yeah, I got it. No, that's what I, I was trying to tell you that back there. But I know you couldn't hear me because of the wind. No, my, my helmet ran out of battery somehow. This is a... Uh, Another nice road and starting to feel a little uh, a lot more comfortable now with the temperature. It's still very windy but I'm not feeling cold anymore so I'm quite enjoying myself on this ride here. wasn't long enough to do eight minutes so I think I did a little over six minutes and I'm going downhill now but I'm gonna coast a little bit 
while I wait from Jason here, I might as well talk about um, my indoor training regimen over the winter. And uh, I Zwifted the entire time. And uh, I didn't do any more than, my long rides were no more than two and a half hours on the trainer. I just can't do any longer than that. Um, I get really bad uh, cramping on my pinky toes, both feet. And so I limit it to just two and a half hours. One of the things like people would say is like, it's you know probably really hard to do uh, to ride inside for that long. And yes, it is mentally. And so what I did was I made some challenges for myself. And one of those challenges was to uh, get some route badges. So that kind of kept me going through the winter. Joy's going up the road on her third effort. And now we're out in the open in some farmland on the main road and really notice the difference not having the trees lining the road like we did on the dirt road. Getting uh, hit with a crosswind right now. Stopped here for a quick nature break uh, about two hours into the ride and uh, looks like the my heated gloves ran out of battery. I had it only on the low setting and it lasted about two hours but the battery's gone now so I still have the hot hands packs in there so that's uh, that's helping. Um, we just got a little bit cold coming down a down a hill there um, but now that we're in some lower uh, elevation hopefully the wind won't hit us as much um, I'm pleasantly surprised with the way this this ride has gone though so far um, I thought I was going to be colder and more uncomfortable but it's it's been very manageable got done with the ride and uh, it was 47 and a half miles took us uh, three hours and 51 minutes so average speed 12.3 miles per hour which I'm not too uh, displeased with considering that it felt like we had a headwind pretty much all day it was supposed to be a headwind going uh, the route went in kind of a big loop and on the way out was supposed to be a headwind on the way back was supposed to be a tailwind but as we're uh riding back here getting close to the car we rode past a house that had some flags out in front and they were they were blowing toward us so it appears the tailwind that we were supposed to have was really a headwind coming back um but anyway it was a great route um some nice scenic roads both paved and dirt roads over there in new york enjoy did a great job of finding some some good new gravel route roads for us to ride 
it was pretty much a headwind. Now I have this app installed in my in my Strava account. It's called Windsocket. So I'm curious to see how long um, we've been on riding into a headwind. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's over two hours because it felt like like it it was headwind the entire time. In terms of the workout, unfortunately, I did not actually get to to finish it, um, mainly because uh, the headwind. The, the wind was just blowing me all over the place and I really couldn't get any of the power out because I was like either grinding or spinning when the wind stopped and so it was just I couldn't keep a steady cadence so um, I was pretty disappointed that I really couldn't get the power out probably uh, just because I don't know maybe I'm tired from yesterday's workout also or whatever it might be I'm sure there's other factors but uh, no big deal. I'm going to try to do that workout again indoors. And uh, oh yeah, that's another thing is that maybe I should have done it on Macedonia State Park um, because it's a more gradual climb and it's it's less, um, I'm assuming it, it's probably not as exposed to the wind as the roads that we were riding through today um, because it was open roads, open farmland. And like Jason said, it was they were such beautiful roads, and that's the first time we've ridden into that part of uh, New York before. And I'm glad that we did because the gravel roads were perfect, beautiful. Um, it was just a be beautiful scenery all throughout, and I love riding into those roads where it's like farmland and um, wide open. Um, anyway. Um, aside from that, oh yes, our new camera, and I'm sorry I did not get to record any in my camera. Uh, that's probably, this, that's because when I was, uh, removing it from its mount to talk on the camera, I somehow unscrewed the stem cap. And because I screwed it back on using the camera, don't ask how I did that, um, I couldn't straighten out the actual mount itself. And so when... I p would snap the camera back on it was actually like um, parallel to the stem itself so it was like useless footage um, but uh, after I did that so that's why you didn't get anything from from my camera um, but I'm curious to see what the footage looks like um, once I upload all the all the clips anyway uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it was a fun ride, and I hope you guys get to go out there and ride for yourselves as well. Um, hopefully not too much of a crazy headwind like we were riding into. Um, yeah, until next time, don't forget to enjoy your rides. Bye-bye.